the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. For True riches. I have taught you, but not in this detail, that there are seven currencies that buy money. And I want to show you the capital that buys money. These are the things you should pursue and not necessarily money itself. It is impossible to have these seven currencies and be poor. I submit to you spiritually and even financially. Are you ready? Seven currencies. The capital that buys money. This is what the Bible calls true riches. That everyone who wants to have lasting access to resources that can enable you live a comfortable life, advance the purposes of the kingdom, and then to be a blessing to this dying world. True riches. Number one. Are you ready? The first capital that buys money is called meekness. Please write it down. Meekness. This is the first of the seven currencies that the Bible calls true riches. Meekness. Don't downplay what you are hearing at all. Meekness, I wrote here, is a healthy blend of humility and teachability. Please write it down. That meekness is a healthy blend of humility and teachability. To be meek from the dictionary definition means to be submissive. It means to be easily agreeable. Meekness, capital number one. That whoever can possess this superior currency, that person is bound to have access to what the Bible calls unrighteous or unfaithful mammon. Matthew 5 and verse 5. Let's hear what Jesus himself had to say. Let's read together. Ready? One to read. Blessed are the meek. What is their blessing? For they shall inherit the earth. One more time. Hmm. Do you know what it means to be given the earth as an inheritance? And the Bible says the quality that gives you access to that inheritance is meekness. Not just blessed are the learned. Not just blessed are the Africans. Blessed are the meek. That if you find any man who is meek, there is a relationship between that quality of meekness and access to the earth. Maybe I should show you two things the Bible has to say about the earth so that you will respect this statement. Job 28 and verse 5. Job 28 and verse 5. Can we read it together? One to read. As for the earth, out of it comes bread. Hmm. Job is giving us a mystery that every time you see bread is the earth that produces it. So when you are given access to the earth, it says, blessed are the meek, they will inherit the earth. And that as for the earth, out of it, comes bread in ecclesiastes i believe chapter 5 and verse 9 the bible says the profit of the earth is for all for how many the profit that means there is profit in the earth that is what the bible means by bread profit is a word you only use for business am i right on that now we see the bible using the word profit connecting it to the earth and connecting it to meekness moreover the profit of the earth is for all and the king himself is served by what comes in the field there are many many people who have ignored this spiritual treasure of meekness the quality of humility the quality of teachability and yet they want to prosper they find out that the earth itself fights them unfortunately all human beings also have the earth in them so when the Bible says you will inherit the earth <laughs> do you know what that means he is not saying you will inherit the farm no 
provided the man who stands before you is made of earthen vessel that you will have access you will be endeared to men when you sustain that quality of meekness please listen blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth whether in form of the physical location or men who are earthen vessels you have the advantage of the earth when you are meek another perspective to me is the sense of a know-it-all mentality you see most people have programmed failure of all shades including poverty to themselves because we seem to have this know-it-all mentality no results yet know-it-all mentality and the bible says blessed are the meek i've told you that meekness is a blend of humility and teachability I know there can be more thank God for the miracles that God is working through my life but I know I can learn more there has to be someone who knows more that can help me know Jesus the word incarnate was at the temple and he was learning can you imagine I could imagine Jesus looking at all of them I'm speaking and say listen I hope you are getting it and he's looking at them the word of God yet he submitted himself is that not what philippians chapter 2 says he says among the many attributes of jesus you should have let this mind be in you verse 5 which was also in christ jesus let this mindset of humility meekness show me a man who is genuinely humble show me a person a church a business a nation that is teachable that is meek there will be no poverty eventually you will conquer everything that represents lack because the bible says your inheritance will not just be things your inheritance will be the earth there are many businesses that should not have gone down but the pride to not learn there are many individuals who were once millionaires once billionaires in as much as we know in terms of finances and most of them just went down overnight because the only thing they had was money money minus meekness is sitting on a time bomb are we together meekness is someone learning so the next time somebody tells you i am rich or i have money you tell the person with respect to what if you're speaking about your bank i salute you i don't downplay that but you are you are in trouble it's one thing for you to have money in a bank it's another thing for the bank to be safe Am I right on that? Now I love banks. Keep your money there. They are doing their best. We love them. It's one thing for you to have a house or a shop or a mall. And it's another thing to trust it. God forbid, but fire can gut it in one moment and burn up everything there. Money has gone. But do you have the true riches that can bring back money? Meekness. Do you know there are many people today who can tell you they had access to vast resources, not necessarily because of anything extraordinary they did. Sustaining that quality of meekness and humility earned them access to the hearts of kings, champions, and nobles. Many of you here are leaders. You run your businesses and your companies. You agree with me that nobody will draw close to himself. Anybody who is arrogant and not teachable nobody will want to risk you would not risk your corporation not even your church so the more people carry this i do no mentality i know i know even with the absence of results you are reprogramming failure and poverty confidence is not pride and pride is not confidence meekness can i give you the second very quickly capital number two that buys wealth is called competence the second capital that buys money in this kingdom is competence skill that every time you find a man who is competent there is a a guarantee that eventually that man is going to find himself handling resources whether he maintains it or not is another thing. But as far as having access to it, there is a guarantee. Proverbs 18, 16. Please write down. Proverbs 18, 16. A man's gift, the Bible says, make it room for him. 
it says, and it bringeth him before great men. This is the reason why I frown at incompetence and I challenge people, whether in ministry or in business, corporate life, whatever it is, that you owe yourself a responsibility to forget about trying to look for money because that is even a wrong approach. Are we together now? And to become competent. Competent has a voice and leaders know the language of competence. Let me repeat. If I call you right now, if I say stand up in Hausa or in Yoruba or in Igbo, there are a few people who will remain seated because they may not know what I said. That is, competence has a language. There are people that competence calls and they can hear the language of competence. Many, many believers, I submit to you, are very incompetent, especially as far as our corporate work is concerned or ministry, etc., we are not committed to excellence and competence. We pride around mediocrity and then we want to garnish it with all kinds of church sentiments. There are many believers who have had the privilege of projects that were given to them and they did complete rubbish and yet they are sincere believers. Competence. God grants you an opportunity to cook for kings and because you took time just wishing that God will invite you rather than preparing yourself. Your waiting period should not be spent just anticipating days that will come. According to the law of time and chance, your day will come. So prepare while you are in the wilderness because you will see Goliath one day. Most people don't spend time preparing. Apostle, nobody is inviting me. No one is placing a grace, the demand upon the grace of God upon my life. Use that period to be preparing your sermons, to know God, to grow in the anointing, so that the day that you are now invited, like Joseph, you will not go back to prison again. It was Dr. Murdoch who defined favor, I think, as when preparedness meets opportunity. Most believers, I'm telling you, are not competent. That includes we preachers, that includes apostles, prophets, etc. That includes business people. It also includes career people. And please talk to me. If you have an organization and you are downsizing people, you will usually start from people you consider to be incompetent. Is that true? Or people whose value is not needed. And largely, it will be believers that will be thrown out. And then they return back filling the church with all kinds of cries. Why would God do this to me? Why God, you watch me like this as they were throwing me out. I'd like you to enter a covenant with yourself. I'm not called to do everything, but there must be one thing in my life when I, that I will be exceptionally competent. This is not an advocacy to be a jack of all trades, but you must make up your mind. Is there one thing that brands you out? You are a man of God and you make up your mind with the, with the, within the limit of the grace that has been given to you. That you will be competent, you will be excellent. When you bring the word of God to God's people, it will be without ambiguity and confusion. You will bring it and communicate it intelligently, grace with power. competence most times we commit very little in terms of growing to become competent but our lives are full of an anticipation for very large results and most people think that just because of you know spiritual advantages like favor no problem I don't have I cannot do anything but I know God will still favor me you are talking to men Hallelujah. How many of you will allow somebody who is just jumping and saying, I'm not a killer, but is not a competent person to perform a heart surgery on somebody you love? The person says, listen, I'm a member of Koinonia. I love Jesus and I love apostle. Just give me anything, whether it's razor blade, whether it's a knife, you just allow me with the heart of your loved one and watch what I will do. How many of you will do that? And yet you are people of faith incompetence this is what has separated nations to be called third world and first world are we together now 
This is what has separated people into cadres of possibilities. Listen, if you are a man of God and you are not competent, I, 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 I hate to sound arrogant, but I will tell you, human beings are intelligent. Nobody will come to submit themselves to any spiritual leadership where they know that value will not be dispensed, that is intelligently communicated and is life applicable. There must be a point of application as far as dispensing knowledge is concerned. Everybody wants to be around a leader they know and trust, not just in terms of sincerity of heart, but in terms of capacity to deliver. The Bible calls it sufficiency. Make up your mind that you will stop celebrating being a local champion and get back to your drawing board and make sure that you zoom on one thing and obtain grace from God to be competent. You would have driven shame and reproach, including poverty, from your life. You're following me say amen. amen apostle i can cook it's just that christians don't like giving me food be honest with yourself are you right on that is it true should we believe you that you can do what you can do competently and i hope you know when i talk about competence i'm stretching you to use a global bar and a global reference because you see respectfully speaking we come from backgrounds that have celebrated mediocrity for many years and so even at your point of deficiency you are still a champion there are there are there are regions where you do not necessarily need to do anything you are still a champion but Jesus is charging us and calling on us that if you truly want to experience the supplies of the kingdom then you must value this capital called competence. Number three, what is the third capital that buys money is called credibility or a good name. Please write it down. Credibility slash a good name. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1, the third capital that buys money. Watch what the Bible says. A good name is rather to be chosen than what look at this so he's saying if you are given the option whether as a preacher whether as a businessman as a family man you are given an opportunity here is a good name and here is riches great riches the bible gives you counsel it says do not go near great riches choose a good name do you know what a good name is credibility credibility i submit to you there are people right now who are living on a good name and their children's children it does not matter the economic condition a good name has become like a garrison protecting them against shame are we together there are people who have been given jobs today in truth not necessarily because of what they studied or their level of competence a good name credibility and our world today especially among believers we do not place value on credibility every leader here knows that credibility counts and credibility has a very tremendous power of blessing people beyond you yourself there are children today who will never beg because they are working on a good name no wonder names are so powerful Jesus gave us his name he didn't just give us his life. He gave us his name. He said, in my name. Every time you see demons, don't just recite memory verses. As wonderful as that is, make sure that all you do, use my name. They don't have respect for any other thing else but the name. The name of Jesus. We call that name. Sometimes with revelation, sometimes out of emotions. And we watch with shock and wonder sometimes the way demons tremble. The name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus be healed. In the name of Jesus be lifted. In the name of Jesus let doors be open. And we watch from one point. You call on the name of Jesus. And watch what happens. He said silver and gold I do not have. But such as I have. I have true riches. I may not have the money to give you to go to the hospital. But I have what can even buy you health. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He said rise up and walk. And the Bible says the man was still watching. And he held him. He said you do not know the power of the office I just invoked. I've had the opportunity to enjoy the leverage of you know great names. And it is my prayer 
that God, it will please God that someday my name and even the name of this ministry will be a leverage for someone. That someone will be able to use it and it will still be a blessing. That is not only the name of Jesus is most powerful, but your name should also be powerful. There are people even in death, their names can open doors. Even in death. How come you have this surname? Oh, I'm the great grandchild of this. This man, come. And they absorb them immediately. Credibility. Credibility. There are people who never had access to vast cash, but they, 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 they lived a life of integrity and they lived a life of credibility. Anybody can vouch for them. Please write it down. Capital number three that buys money is a good name. There are people today who will be going around looking for loans. I'm looking for 1 million, 10 million, 100 million, 1 billion for this. And someone will just say, listen, for the sake of the person that you are or for the sake of the person that you know, that name, I'm not going to borrow you. I will give it to you. May your name be a leverage. And let me tell you the truth everyone here you are a leader you are a parent you have somebody a subordinate of some sort under you you have a responsibility of working to make your life credible enough that your name the name of your organization the name of your church the name of whatever platform god has given you that it becomes so credible when in the secular when we mention names i don't want to mention names of businesses but there are all kinds of brands across the globe is that true and do you know that when you buy certain products for instance my phone here most times what you buy are names and logos not necessarily the products even if i put an original product for you and you check you want to check the name first if there's no name there even if it was genuine you will throw it back and say i did not find the name we spend millions and billions for names. We wear names and we feel good wearing names. Names can be worn. Names can be driven. Names can be used. Names can be eaten. We eat names. We drive names. We sing names. We use names. And some of those people are dead. Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. Are we together? If I meet someone right now and tells me I'm a member of the Bahamas Faith Ministries International or I'm related to late Dr. Miles Munro, chances are excellent that immediately I will be endeared to them because it is a name that brings memory of impact, selfless service. My life, that man was used by God to set a straight compass towards a victorious life for me names are powerful i have taught you here that names can be padlocks and they can be keys it is your it's your choice to choose your name can be a padlock and lock even open doors against your children and your children's children or your name can be a key it is my prayer that it not only becomes a key that it becomes a lift that man the bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower that the righteous man runneth to it and is safe are we together so number three credibility for those of you who think it does not care i will do anything for money it does not matter the most important thing is i have money if you have money and you lose credibility it was a bad bargain let me repeat myself if you have to give up credibility and a good name for money you've not only disobeyed scripture you've done your destiny evil i rather remain poor in terms of bankruptcy of cash and have a good name somebody will be sensible enough through the sojourn of my life to know the value of a good name and they will bring me back to the table of the great say a good name man of god a good name is worth fighting for businessman a good name is worth fighting for corporations fight and invest millions and billions of dollars to brand their name they can go hiding things and packaging things because they know that the, their unique selling point is their name not if, whether the value is actually worth you know that whole pursuit once they have a good name look at the kind of investment jesus put on his name 
Wherefore God had so highly exalted him. What did God give Jesus? A name. Not just a throne. The throne was always there before he came to the earth. But now he sat on that throne with a name. And here's what the Bible says. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven. Help me. Of things in the earth and of things under the earth. That is the power of a name. You can have a bad name. Nobody names their children Lucifer, Jezebel, and all those kinds of things. Maybe there may be people, but generally, nobody will name his child Satan or Apollyon or Abaddon. Nobody names his child Mammon. You know, all these kinds of things. These are all names. And yet, nobody wants to name his child that way. To the point that people grow up and change their names. Thank my parents for doing the best that they do, you may say. But this name they gave me, that means Satan, that means evil spirit, I will change it. Will you ever give your child a name Beelzebub? Just because you say it's in the Bible? No. Abaddon, Apollyon, no. Or you call your child unclean spirit or something of that sort. You will never do that. Please look at me. Many people in search for money have thrown away good names. Many people in search for mundane things, cars, houses, political positions, business positions, all kinds of physical influences have thrown away names. I'm teaching you by the spirit of the living God tonight. It is better to lose money and gain that name. If you lose money, and you gain a name if you lose membership dear man of God and you gain names a good name if you lose you know whatever it is that you lose and you have a good name you have still sustained the capital that can still make you relevance I hope you know that this capital does not just buy naira and cobble and dollars when we talk about I just use money to represent it can buy health it can buy relevance influence whatever it is can we continue? Number four, the fourth capital that buys money or anything of value upon the earth is called light. The fourth capital is called light. Please put in bracket knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Light. Shamakata. light proverbs chapter 23 proverbs 24 3 and 4 proverbs 24 3 and 4 please give it to us through wisdom is an house builder give us amplified please let's put perspective to this amplified through skillful and godly wisdom look at it a house a life a home a family built and by understanding the bible says it is established on sound and good foundation aha uh -huh. verse 4 it says and by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches is it in your bible there that there is a relationship between knowledge wisdom understanding and riches pleasant riches light when god wants to help a man and make you rich he does not just give you a job he does not just give you a business idea he does not just give you an investment idea ladies and gentlemen please listen all these things have their place but in order of priority he floods you with light the moment God gives you light, he's making you wealthy. That means every koinonia service as you come here, you must have that mentality that you are living wealthier. But you're saying, Apostle, my ATM is not, you know, the values are not increasing. My pocket still sounds empty. Now you have in spiritual intelligence to know that light can buy money. Light can buy influence. Light can buy a space of relevance and honor for you in life and destiny. Light. The entrance of thy word giveth light and even understanding to the simple. Is someone learning? 
No wonder you talk to the Lord about increase. Lord, I want to pay the school fees of my children. And God leads you to materials. You know, years ago, many, many years ago, as I began to take my life and my destiny serious, I went to buy a few books, even books on finance, uh, from a few people that I thought knew what they were saying. And I began to read the books and I closed them because I was not happy. All that I was seeing in the books were mindsets, character traits. I said, these guys are lying. What are you doing? Go straight to the point. What is all this behave well, greet, be cautious. Then they will fill the book with stories and all kinds of examples. I said, this is what I wasted my money for. How foolish I was. They were really giving their secrets. Light. But we're throwing away light because we were looking for Naira and Kobo. Like many of you have thrown, you know, if they say there's some money that is given somewhere at any secretariat at all, be there tomorrow, six o'clock, 100,000 or 1 million, you just come stand on the queue. Many people will be there from two and they would stand there and there's nothing wrong. I appreciate your zeal. You stand there from two and not mind at all. But a moment to sit down and feast upon the light of scripture, people begin to say, is this thing really necessary? In him was light and that light was the life of man. So he could look at a fish and say, produce coin, take away shame from us. He could look at a sea that had no fish, true riches were coming there. So he looks at a sea and commands fish to appear and saves the disciples. Do you know the kind of prosperity they would have had from selling that fish? The capital that buys money light listen the bible says to buy the truth i did that teaching i've not done it here but i did it in takoradi in ghana i hope one day god will grant me the grace to teach it here buy the truth it never said look for the truth the truth is available but it comes at a cost buy the truth it says and it, when you have it sell it not that means somebody will come to try to bargain with you to give you money and say give me truth say tell the person you're a bad businessman go away i will keep my truth Buy the truth and sell it not. Light. From today, I want you to become a student of light. And that every time light is coming, for instance, just knowing the light that honor can open doors and honor, dishonor can close doors. Do you know that light I have received without exaggeration? Hundreds and now in total, maybe thousands of text messages from people saying, Apostle, you taught me on the law of honor. And just that law alone is why I have my job today. Just that law alone is why my siblings have been able to, you know, have this and that. Light is powerful. Light is powerful. You keep light and you keep money. Rush for light. Leave money. You will soon find out that the money itself is looking for where light is so that it will stay there. Shout light. When you go back home, thank God for a job. I will pray for you to get a job. Thank God for business ideas. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm showing you the reason why we continue to recycle frustrations. Because for many of us, we think I'm tired of this situation. What I need is a job or business or some investment capital somewhere. No, this is the real capital you need. Stop frowning at your uncle. Stop frowning at everybody to say wicked man. This man has money. I begged him to give me one million naira and I will never need money in my life again. He laughed at you and gave you a book and you insulted him. He loved you too much to limit you by giving you one million and he gave you a book. We stand upon the knowledge, the wisdom and the understanding that we have. I can tell you by the integrity of scripture and with all humility, show me a career of light, life applicable light. I show you a man who has waved poverty, shame and mediocrity goodbye. It will... <laughs> Number five, let's rush. If you are learning, say amen. The fifth capital that buys money is called favor. Mm. True riches. When God wants to make you wealthy, 
he helps you access the dynamics that brings favor proverbs 22 and verse 1 the b part let's read together in fact let's read everything but the emphasis is the b part ready one to read a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches number two and loving favor rather than silver and gold is that in your bible look up please ladies will know this better than the men most men don't know how expensive gold and silver is but you see our women know very very well some of you are already smiling you say ah apostle you can trust me i can even tell you the current price of gold jewelry and original i know original and i don't know what else they are called but we know there's original in the equation it says loving favor should be desired than silver and gold please look at me i want you to be very honest especially in this time of need if they drop silver or gold gold chain gold earring gold everything even gold idol if they drop it here are we together and ask and drop favor here and ask people look pick it someone will pick even is the idol that is even bigger you say after all jesus said give thanks i will break it and turn it into the face of jesus I will meet a goldsmith somewhere in Kano or Dubai. They will break it for me and turn it into, or oh, the cross at least. If I'm not sure what the face of Jesus is, at least I know how the cross looks. Let it be a gold cross that glorifies Jesus and is still an investment for me. But the Bible says, if you are given that option, please look at me, and you are given favor, he said, ignore it. Even find gold. Now, I want you to see how scripture thinks that a man should desire favor above silver and gold what does that mean it means then that in the mind of god favor is by far greater than gold and silver i have taught extensively on favor and i'm hoping that in the name of jesus someone would have gotten it by now if not may tonight be the night where you finally get it Exodus 3 21 I will show you this scripture for as many times as you would require until you see the power that is contained in accessing favor and I will give these people even koinonia favor in the sight of the Egyptians it says and it shall come to pass that when ye go as you sojourn through your life ye shall not go empty are you seeing that emptiness is proof of the absence of favor? Empty, he never said emptiness of the pocket or emptiness of the bank account. All kinds of emptiness can be traceable to the absence and the bankruptcy of favor. So when God wants to help you, when you bow your knees and say, Lord, change my financial status. Lord, change this issue of shame and mediocrity in my family. Here comes favor. And as favor comes, you must embrace it. Do you know, there are people who have been in this city, not to offend you, but there are people who have been in this city for decades. They've not been able to have access to one piece of land or one house. And yet there are people who have come and through the instrumentality of favor, God has gallantly settled them structurally. That's what favor can do. Psalm 44 and verse 3. They got not the land in possession, my Bible says, by their own sword. It says, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand, thine arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor. Please look at me. I'm not downplaying your monthly pay, but let me just use for an example. Even if you are working for a billionaire in dollars, if your salary is, say, $1,000, you're not going to get more easily. The fact that he's a billionaire does not mean he will give you $1 million or 500000 That is your salary. It's fixed. You agree. If you have a provision where you are given other benefits outside of your core salary, that's fine. But you see, the thing about favor is that the financial expression of favor 
purely depends listen carefully it depends on the manifestation of the grace of God that compels that person to give to you somebody can give you the equivalent of a million dollars in cash or in time simply because they are responding to favor break that into your salary how many years is that favor is powerful it's an accelerator of destinies somebody can manifest favor by giving you a land another person can give you a house another person can give you a furnished house it's, it's not a call for laziness your labor is to make sure that that true that capital is on your head is at work in your life and don't you say that these kinds of blessings are only for preachers it's a lie apostle nobody knows me I'm not preaching in any crusade so nobody can give me a car or a house it's not true what is on your head can fish out blessings from anywhere and it will gravitate towards your life I want you to believe me on this are we together say favor shout it like you desire it when I found the force of favor and I saw the power of favor I prayed it I cried it I consistently walk in keeping with the things that keep favor in my life and keep favor in this ministry and I submit to you without any sense of um, pride that I have an idea of what the favor of God looks like and this is why every time I pray for people you know years ago it became a concern for me and I, I remember even challenging my people there are many graces that God has placed upon my life and I'm honored and grateful for it but it seemed like the hardest of the graces to receive has been this favor many people have received whether the miraculous this very easily but for some reason and I went to the Lord in prayer I said Lord why is it that this thing is very hard it's not supposed to be I have prayed I have laid both hands on people what is really stopping people from stepping into it you see because favor is a product of many things there are many factors that have to play themselves together listen to my teachings on favor this grace called favor find it and camp around it and listen your way out of shame listen your way out of emptiness man of God knowledge is important I have I just spoke about it being one of those capital but let me submit to you in these times of need these perilous times you will need the favor that grace must be functional in your life that becomes your only bailout out of shame even financial shame do you know that a whole corporation can carry that grace for favor you know that yes a ministry can carry that grace for favor when you carry the grace for favor you will see how childish manipulation looks like it is totally unnecessary ah. Lord let your favor not depart from this house let your favor not depart from our lives in the name of Jesus let your favor not depart from our businesses let it not depart from our homes yes when the favor of God is upon a man, your life becomes an absolute wonder. A wonder from a global scale. I hope that God will grant us a grace. Maybe after the conference, I hope, we'll have the opportunity to tell you the things that God has done. It is, it is simply incredible what God has done. Just preparing for a UK conference, just a few weeks, and, and I, can, I, can, I, can only, I can only begin to... I can just tell you glory to God let's just leave it there so don't think this is just a Nigerian thing where in Nigeria favor has value everywhere everywhere you are in America you are in the Caribbeans you are somewhere in the northern part of Nigeria middle belt here don't think favor is just needed in Abuja because those who have money are in Abuja or Lagos or Port Harcourt it's not true everywhere there are men favor applies everywhere hallelujah incredible manifestation of God's favor already just preparing for this conference these are things that you would almost think they are lies or exaggerations but by the power of God and we know that this is only 
a tip of the iceberg of the mighty things that God is going to be doing. And let me use the opportunity and well, right now, you know, the whole, um, the number has been exhausted sadly, so we've had to close down everything. But, but then I believe that we'll still find a way. So you are UK around Europe, make sure your heart is opened that as an opportunity is given, be part of this conference make sure that you bring in all your people if you need to fly from around the world it is truly going to be an encounter of a lifetime hallelujah and i didn't tell you i'll be joined by my dear friend and brother pastor nathaniel bassi <laughs> hallelujah interesting i didn't even know that the media had done something like that praise god and i have several friends ministers of the gospel from this nation from across the globe I mean, several people, a dear pastor friend told me, he said, listen, I have a conference somewhere, but Apostle, I'm flying down. We believe there is a revival. It's like a tsunami, what God is bringing over Europe. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's get back to our discussion. Praise the name of the Lord. Favor. You need it. You need it in your life. You need it in your ministry, dear preacher. You need it in your family. Otherwise, you're going to live a life of anger and frustration. You will find out that things don't seem to work out. But in the name of Jesus, as you are seated under this anointing, I stand and invoke the power that has helped many to rise from rags to riches with integrity, that has helped many to rise from families where their roofs were leaking to now building homes and building churches for people. May that grace for favor rest upon you. I say it again, may that grace for favor rest upon you. Rest upon your ministry, rest upon your business. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Number six, true riches, the capital that buys money. Are you ready for number six? Relationships. I won't say much there because I have taught you relationships. I've told, I've told you here that relationships are currencies. Remember that anything money can buy, relationships can even buy it better. That is true. If you use money to pay for everything in your life, you are poor. No. There are many receipts in your life that should be paid by relationships, paid by favor, paid by skill. It is not only paid by cash. Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 5. Let's hurry up. Genesis 12, 1 to 5. Follow the story carefully. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country from thy kindred, thy father's house unto a land that I would show you too. It says, and I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4. It says, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him. I like this. Lot was not there when the promise was given, but Lot decided to connect himself to a man who was carrying the blessing and carrying prophecy. Are we together? The Bible says Abraham was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haram. The last verse, then we jump to 13. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan they came. Remember, the Bible says he took Lot. Lot went alone, empty-handed. But watch the power of relationships. 13 and verse 1. 13 and verse 1. Chapter 13 now, Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and the Bible says, Lot with him, still going with him into the south too. And Abraham was very rich. If I were setting an exam, I would tell you to list which of these true riches was responsible for cattle, silver, and gold. Hmm. <laughs> 
Ah, I'm enjoying myself here. Praise God. Anyway, Abraham was very rich. We don't know what he did, but we know what he carried. He was rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Verse 3. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai. Verse 4. Watch this. Unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called upon the name... What did he call upon? Hmm. Verse 5. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, carried the things that he carried and started having flocks and herds and tents. Can you imagine that? Lot went empty-handed, but he noted that certain things were following Abraham. I'm sure somewhere along the lines he would have said, Abraham, can you please, whatever it is that you're transacting in the realm of the spirit that is producing cattle and silver and gold, can it also come upon me? And Lot started reproducing these physical results. When we read further, you will see that to a point that there was conflict and the conflict was simply because of the abundance of possessions. In fact, let's touch verse 6. Genesis 13, 6. And the land was not able to bear them. Why? That they might be dwell together for their substance, not for his substance. Lord had become so wealthy, you would not even know who blessed who. So that they could not dwell together relationships are powerful they are advantageous connections i will continue to pray for you and i'll continue to encourage you to discern the value of relationships as far as programming a life of greatness a life of wealth anybody especially in this day who ignores strategic relationships has signed up for a life of poverty and pain and failure believe me as a man of God, no matter how anointed you are, you cannot do it alone. As a businessman, no matter how skilled you are, you cannot do it alone. Remember, I've not just told you one. I've told you now six. You can have one and you can have a few things around your life. But when you want to walk in the richness, the abundance of the blessing of the Lord, you need all seven. And that includes relationships. There are many of us here who have not been taught the value of relationships. You have thrown every good person out of your life in search for money. You have thrown every good person out of your life in search for whatever it is. It's time to sit down and rethink and bring valuable relationships into your life. Valuable is the key word. Valuable relationships. Because like I've taught you here, if Jonah is in your boat, you will not be prosperous. You will lose, even though Jonah is not a fake prophet. But if Jesus is in your boat, hallelujah, glory be to God. In fact, Jesus is so powerful that even if he's not in your boat, if he's just by the seaside, you will still catch fish. Are we together? My life today has been enhanced by quality relationships, very strategic relationships, and bless God for all the strategic relationships that he's placed in my life, placed in this ministry, and that includes you. May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, don't be afraid. It's true. Except you think you are not a blessing. Say, I'm a blessing. Forget about what, who told you. Just say, I'm a blessing. Amen. Yes. Make up your mind that you are not a curse. In the name of Jesus, I'm not a curse. Doesn't matter what was told me in the office. Doesn't matter what my spouse told me. Doesn't matter what my children or my parents told me. I believe the report of the Lord. It says, in thee. And the Bible says, Galatians 3.29, that if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That means I am a partaker of everything that was told Abraham. That in me, Joshua Selman, and even in Koinonia, 
all the nations of the earth the families of the earth be blessed that's why he can send us to europe he can send us to the u.s he can send us to canada to africa everywhere and we go with joy knowing that we have come he said blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord one more time say i am a blessing listen let it affect you let it alter your thinking don't look at yourself as a non-entity and as an extra luggage in people's lives hoping and scrounging for acceptance that anybody who embraces their hands to bring you into their life they've brought a gift not a human being see that that you are such a blessing that when God wants to help men, he sends you there. May you be such a person in the name of Jesus Christ that a business is going down and God wants to introduce an altar that represents a blessing. He will compel them to give you a job, no matter what the job is. And you step into that place and within one year, they come out of shame. You become like the ark of God, even in the house of Obed-Edom. Say it one more time, I am a blessing. Apostle, but I cannot speak English. That's not what I'm asking you to say. Uh-uh. Apostle, I don't think I'm good enough. I don't think I'm fine enough. I don't think I'm preacher enough. That's not what I'm asking you. Say, I am a blessing. I am a blessing. Yes, sir. I have indoctrinated myself to believe that I am a blessing. I truly believe that I'm a blessing to my world, that I'm a blessing to Koinonia, that I'm a blessing to all those God has sent me to and will send me to. You must carry that mentality. It's not about being arrogant. It's about being certain and confident. I am a blessing. Everything around me drips the blessing of heaven. I shake you and greet you. Your life will not be the same. We have an opportunity to converse. Your life will not be the same. Because it says, he that cometh from above is above all. I come to your church. It will never be the same. I come to your nation. It will never be the same. That is the truth. You see, when you understand the power of what you are bringing, listen, don't just be relationship conscious, be blessing conscious that I have a role. You know, I have taught you. You may not have a technical role in that relationship, but you can bring spiritual value. Look what happened to our lives when we opened up to this relationship called Jesus. We brought Jesus into our lives and he literally turned everything around. Look at the Holy Spirit. Look at your relationship with the word. Look at your relationship with the brethren. Listen, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when you are counting your assets, count relationship first before houses. When you are counting your assets, count relationships first before houses. Don't tell me I have a house in America. Congratulations, but that's not enough. One policy can take that house away from you. I hope you know that. Don't say I have a house in Maitama, I have a house in Guzape. Congratulations. Don't say I have a house in Banana Island. List all the places you think are choice places. They are still land. A house cannot hug. A house cannot cry with you. But there are men who are greater than estates. There are men who are even greater than nations. When they looked at the womb of the woman, they said she has two nations, not two babies, not two children. Honestly, listen, let me tell you, it is my prayer for you. Go and listen to my message on Destiny Helpers. I'm not talking about that tonight for time. But I'm praying for you that God will bring to your life, number one, divine connectors. I'm praying that my God will bring to your life men of influence. This is the world of men. And there are discussions that only happen between men of influence. If you have not attained onto a certain level of, of social status, whether you, whether you say people don't like you, you will not have a voice there. And so you would need people who God has elevated and given that level of influence to advocate for you and happier you if God has connected you to men of influence. There are many of us here, you are gifted people, but there is nobody who is of influence who can speak for you because you have ignored the power of influence. Can I tell you, influence is a powerful weapon. Very powerful weapon. One person can just write, even on a little piece of paper, kindly consider him and sign his signature, and that's it. He said, go and give it to this person. And while they are insulting you, including the one who will receive it, 
I, you are a stupid person. He says, sir, please. And he looks at it. That's influence for you. Where did you be this guy? Oh, he's my uncle. Your uncle? Sit down. What did you say you want? That's it. Influence is powerful. I'm praying again. May God bring men of influence to in your life. <laughs> say amen. Oh, may God bring men of influence to in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Can I tell you? In the world of men, influence can open doors. Honestly, somebody can stop you from going to prison. Somebody can stop you from get all kinds of things that it is clear that defeat is imminent but God can use men and he can say remember those days I bring to your memory let the business not go down let them have this and that's it and while that discussion is happening you may not even be there these are the kinds of teachings that believers need to hear in addition to prayer and fasting, you must receive spiritual intelligence to know how the cosmos works. It is the reason why I'm not only praying that God will bring such people, but that you too will rise to become a person of influence. In the name of Jesus Christ. And then remember number three, destiny help us. Gifted men. Oh, corporations, you need this. Gifted people will save you from all kinds of financial leakages. When you find a combination of Daniel, Bezalel, and Joseph in your organization, it cannot go down. Combine such people, then add Esther there, then add Elijah somewhere. Ah. Who again? Gideon. Imagine you have a staff structure made of Gideon, Esther, Elijah, Abba, Joseph, Daniel. Show me the devil that brings that ministry down. Show me the devil that brings that organization down. What Esther cannot do, Elijah is waiting. And what Elijah cannot do, Joseph is waiting. Let me tell you the truth. Gifted people are a real blessing. Do you know why Jesus prayed all night to choose disciples? What is so special about choosing disciples that he had to pray? Because the mission of the church was at the mercy of the people he would select. You are a CEO here. It takes more than just throwing open an interview. No. While you do the interview, go back and hold hands with your wife and some of your core leaders who are believers. I want to assume that your business runs on Christian values. Not necessarily fanatism, but values that honor faith. Begin to pray. Lord, bring strategic people here. And you will find somebody who the grandmother prophesied a grace upon his life. That anywhere you go, you will make the trees there to grow. And that person, God just smuggles that person to your company. And someone just says, I like this person. I will come back. I will start doing business with you. You, will, you cannot imagine the silly reasons why God used, why people lift others up. Someone can just say, I like your name. That's it. I like your name. And then you become the Nigerian director of that company. I like your name. And then you are given an additional one year salary as a gift. I like your name. That's what God can do. May it happen for you. Apostle, I don't have a job. Use the time to get relationships. And let me tell you this. Don't go around throwing away poor people and saying, Apostle has taught us. And if you don't have anything, don't near my life. I've suffered. Don't, don't do that. You act like that. Listen, the person whose star you have seen is by far less than the person who is rising. You have seen John the Baptist, but do you know he's forerunning Jesus? Don't concentrate on John the Baptist and ignore Jesus. Then sooner or later, John will tell you himself that I may decrease. You are in trouble. Are we together? Some of you see our little children here. You see these children coming to run up and down. And you see me hugging them. They are pulling my ears and saying, come and listen. Just obey them and listen. Because you'll be surprised that's a CEO there. 
that's another apostle there that these children in the next few years will be teaching and will sit down and be taking notes and say my goodness with all our study of scripture we didn't see this hallelujah relationships for some of you do you know that God sent you to koinonia here not just to come and listen to apostle be mindful you are sitting down near someone by your left and right now apostle but the person does not look rich that's exactly what I'm trying to deliver you from concluding on people we are teaching true riches don't forget what we are dealing with can I tell you some of the most prosperous people who will come around you do not carry a semblance of prosperity they are too serious thinking about nations that some of them sometimes even to a fault they don't care so much about whatever appearance or whatever it is they are rich they are rich as simple as that be nice to people oh turn and tell your neighbor God bless you that courtesy God bless you sir ah you said you said God bless you so much see me after service and you'll be like who is this man saying I should see him until you find out who is saying that and you see that God has used one person to wipe the tears of not only your family a whole generation's tears can be wiped listen God's instrument still remains men he will always bless men through men lift men through men and then the last of the four that I taught you when it had to do with destiny helpers are burden bearers oh I'm praying that in all you're getting may you have burden bearers because you see everybody who is on his way to the throne must get to the cross one day I didn't say may must what betides a man who is alone when you are carrying the cross the assignment of burden bearers is not to move you forward is to stop you from going backward these are the men who can pray with you in secret and say man of God I know that your ministry needs 10 billion right now I may not have the physical cash but I can pray with you if there's no one like that in your life start praying start praying that God will bring such people are we together ask every great man whether in business in ministry they usually will have even if it's one person somebody at the back of their life at the back of who they can be naked and unashamed with and they can come and say listen I have my fears and my frustrations I was listening to a great man of God speak and he was talking about a few people in his life who he can just come and cry to and sometimes this is a bold man but he can cry to them and say look I'm tired and I'm frustrated in ministry and some of them are his members and they will stand by him and say look you will make it and then come and sit down on Sunday as if they don't know anything may God send those kinds of people to your life as powerful as Jesus is on his way to Golgotha as I'm saying it now some of you I'm sure I, I, I'm not bringing bad memories but there are many of you if you only had a burden bearer you would not have gone through the things you are going through your organization helped many people but the day they were in need for help not even the banks turned their faces to you and everybody just left you can you imagine even the father turned his face away from Jesus and yet Mary said I will die here John said I will die with you here I am your disciple I will not lie Joseph of Ari um, what's his name Simon of Cyrene I may not amount to much but I can carry the cross for you burden bearers are powerful people they will come and cry with you you lost your son I may not be a prayer warrior but put a mat for me around your veranda I will be with you for the next one week in this house until you eat I will not eat I'm saying it again may my God send such people to your life can I tell you listen by reason of what I do I've had the honor and the privilege of weeping with people families through their funerals and there seem to according to the law of time and chance I wish that I would I'll tell you this will not happen but a day will come in your life personally corporately and otherwise where you will be at your downtime 
and at that point you don't need you need people who can look at you and believe in you and cry with you do you know there are many people today even politicians for years they poured their lives to people and the moment they either lose an election or lose something everybody just backs up from them when God wants to help you he will bring you gifts I don't have money now I lost my business I lost my job but somebody will stand with you and say you didn't lose too much you have Jesus and you have me and you say well no just go I'm already a failure he said that means we are failures together because I'm not only standing with you we will cry with you are you learning now yes look at what the disciples did for the gospel they had opportunities to renounce Christ and go free. But many of them, go and read how the disciples died. Some of them were turned upside down. Some of them went through all kinds of things. Men like John were thrown into boiling hot oil. It's just that he could not die. That's why they banished him to the Isle of Patmos. And yet for their faith, the memory of their relationship with Jesus, they could not stand to denounce him. Many of us here right now, our hearts have been broken and, and, and shattered to pieces because of the betrayal, the disappointment of men. And some of them sadly may have been people you poured your heart and your all in. Am I right on that? Some of them, maybe they were house helps. Some of them were people maybe you raised and trained in school. Some of them are people you did all kinds of things. That's human beings for you. But the good news is that there, are, there will always be a few people as I always tell you, my first prayer is may you be one of such people who can be a burden bearer for others. Then may God bring burden bearers to you. In the name of Jesus. I remember many years ago in Zaria, one of my dear leaders, precious lady, I loved her so much. I mean, very vibrant, zealous lady. I was counseling and I think preparing the next day would be service. And then she quickly ran to a particular stage, preparing for a miracle service, you know, happy, praying that God will visit his people. And all of a sudden, I get this call, repeated call, and I take an excuse and run outside. And then they tell me that this, my precious, precious, precious lady had just had an accident. They had to manage it to the family to say they are still working, but she had passed on. And they told me, that I said, God, I went on a retreat immediately. I said, did I not see well? What happened? Have I backslidden? Is it my vision? What happened that my eyes could not see this? I remember allocating some of the heads of department to that department to help manage it. I went before the Lord and I cried. I said, Lord, this is not, you have, you have called us to be life-giving spirits. Why should this happen? And I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and I made up my mind. I said, since this lady will not come back to life, let me do the best that I can, at least to go and see her family. I traveled down to, I think, Kogi State, and to go and see her mom. The mom was so encouraged and said, Apostle, with all your schedules, I said, no, your daughter loved the Lord and she served in this ministry. And the least we can do is to come and support you. Some of you have not been there for anybody, anybody. You hear that someone has died, you just send a text. He's in heaven, cheer up. No, you, you don't behave that way. Are we together? Let me have your attention. Remember, the house of God is a place of training. Don't do that to people. And don't start saying things like, "Long, are you not a believer? You know, pray, let him come back. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. To comfort those who mourn in Zion. There are times that even Jesus can weep. And I'm saying it not just in this ministry, but when you find people crying, be that voice of comfort. Stand by them if you can. Cry with them if you can. Support them if you can. Are we together? It's possible that there are people right now who are in pains. Maybe some of you as you are watching me, you've lost your loved ones, you've lost your job, you've lost something in your life. I'm praying that somebody will be brought by God in your life, unselfish people, sincere people who can call you and say, have you eaten today? Are you fine? Do you have the strength? Oh, rain came and washed our church. I'm about to give up ministry. And the man says, no way. 
no way even if it means me going to your church for the next three weeks to be preaching to keep the congregation together I would do it for you true riches this is one of the most powerful capital the, num the easiest way I know to prosper is to be connected to strategic relationships there are people today right now your prosperity is truly not in your business your prosperity is truly not in your job your prosperity is in a relationship somewhere man of God hear me God can bring one sincere person who has been helped by God and he will tell you my assignment is not only to stand by the ministry but to stand by you as a person my assignment is to make sure that while you serve God your children do not beg for bread there are many people in the body of Christ who are standing strong today. It is not just because they are all wise. It is because God connected strategic people. They cough and those friends and partners will buy them pharmacies, not just drugs. And say, go and choose by yourself. We want to see you happy. But there are many of us here, you pay for everything. If you don't get one month's salary, you are in trouble because you don't have any relationship that is strategic enough now the assignment is not to say i'm everybody's friend come demon speak no 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 it may just be one person who believes in you who loves you you now see why credibility is important because credibility can help you earn quality relationships somebody must trust you enough and i'm praying for you in the name of jesus the son of the living god may somebody believe in you enough to invest their lives to invest their resources to invest their reputation and their credibility in the name of jesus christ man of god you can be anointed but alone you may not be able to do much I was so blessed and encouraged when my dear friends in ministry began to call and say apostle you are going to see us in manchester we're coming to support you we believe in what you're doing we're standing with you standing by you please whatever you wa want us to do we're here available and i said listen these guys did not have to do this they have their own busy schedules all across the, the world that is the power of relationships are we together number seven the anointing Deuteronomy 8 18 with respect to the blessing of the Lord and prosperity there is what the Bible calls the power to get wealth the power the anointing the unction to get wealth true riches if you have been unfaithful with unrighteous mammon who will commit to you these true riches the anointing it says that God can give men the power to get wealth. God can give men the power to get wealth. Please look at me. The anointing is a profound spiritual asset. Profound spiritual asset. The anointing can translate to financial prosperity. In fact, the anointing is an enhancer of all the other six capitals the anointing enhances relationships enhances favor enhances light enhances credibility and a good report the anointing enhances competence and the anointing enhances meekness please look at me everybody you see who is sustainably wealthy I submit to you check their lives from the lens of what I have taught you you will see some or more of these elements these are the elements that have produced the longevity of wealth longevity of financial resources among many other material blessings when the Lord taught me this it changed my life forever so the blind pursuit for money or the blind pursuit for cars and houses and material things you can set them as honest goals, but in order of priority, recall the examples that I gave you here. That on one hand, there are products that you desire to have. Everything that is needed for your life, clothes, whatever it is, physical things. And that money is what will help you buy this. 
whatever money means based on your civilization but that there is another kind of capital spiritual in context yet potent and powerful the bible calls it true riches so when you say you are prosperous i hope you don't just mean my business is doing well when you say you are prosperous i hope you don't just mean i have a good job or multiple jobs in waiting when you say you are prosperous i hope you don't just mean i have a few dollars or pounds or naira in the bank account when you say you are prosperous i hope you don't just mean i have a few real estate somewhere or some shares with some company when you say you are prosperous you mean i have a meek heart genuinely meek are we together when you say you are prosperous you are saying that i have made up my mind to be competent as a culture when you say you are prosperous i have made up my mind to value credibility integrity and a good name even more than business and jobs when you say you are prosperous you mean that i remain a student of light searching for wisdom searching for understanding searching for knowledge when you say i am prosperous you mean that i am one who will do all it takes under god for favor to remain at work in my life and to multiply upon my life and when you say i am prosperous it means i am one who has mastered the art of building strategic destiny relationships that translate into my blessing all wise finally when you say i am prosperous you are saying i have placed value on the ministry of the holy spirit to the point where i have received a rich investment of his anointing upon my life can we pray now jesus said if you have been unfaithful with unrighteous mammon it says who shall commit to you the true riches please stand up on your feet let's minimize moving around we're about to have some time to pray we look to yahweh yahweh our hope is yahweh yahweh we look to yahweh yahweh Forever Yahweh. Yahweh. I give you a personal assignment. Search for any genuine wealthy person, rich person you know, who rose through the dignity of kingdom integrity. And I want you to watch their lives. Look beyond the glitz and the glamour. And you begin to see these forces that the Bible calls true riches. These are the forces playing themselves out. Look beyond the clothes. Look beyond the cars. Look beyond the houses. What gave this man such a pedigree among the great? What gave this man such access to people? Look, including preachers. What gave these people influence across the globe? Now you will see that it is not just the physical things. You will see that when people really want to bless you, it's not a transfer they do to your account. It's a transfer they do to your mind. They do a transfer to your spirit and a transfer to your mind. And when it enters, your senses may tell you, well, you are still broke. You still do not have a job. But watch the forces of the spirit begin to work themselves out. Meekness plus, what's the second one? skill competence plus credibility a good name plus light plus favor plus valuable relationships plus the anointing and then you wave poverty goodbye and these forces will lift his hand and force it to wave you back i am telling you this watch this i don't care the recession that comes upon the earth Provided it did not wipe humans from the earth, you will still stand tall. I don't care the economic turmoil. It was Jim Rohn that said, you do not prosper off the economy. You prosper off your philosophy, your overall understanding. You see that? Governments will come and go, like I said last week. Economies will come and go. 
Civilizations will come and go, but these truths are irrefutable. They are not opinions. Those who have become mysteriously wealthy, whose lives it looks like you cannot add two and two, these are the invisible forces that play themselves in the realm of the spirit and have translated to the manifestation of the blessing. You see that there is no secret to this. I wish that business schools would incorporate this as they teach. So that you don't just limit your teaching to teaching people how to buy and the principles of exchange. That is wonderful. But intrinsically, the world is becoming a lot more psychological than ever. Are we together? Yes. Social capital is greater. It's even catching up with intellectual capital. This is what you get when you come to church. Intelligence that you can take back to your company. Intelligence that you can take back to your church. You can go back and begin to have an introspection of your life and see truly that the reason why there's a lot of fluctuation in our finances, these are the forces. Don't blame the business. Don't blame the investment. The Bible already tells you that mammon is unrighteous. The word unrighteous, there is the word unstable. It already tells you there will be up and down times. What keeps you consistent is the, are the forces. So meekness is bringing its own contribution to your life. Value, competence, bringing its own contribution. Are we together? Credibility is bringing its own contribution. All seven cannot fail. The Bible says give a portion to seven and yea to eight. It says for you do not know the disaster that will come upon the earth. You see, no matter how a little lake can dry up, the well can even dry up. But oceans never dry. Do you know why? Because they have channels that bring water from everywhere. And sometimes those oceans are so deep. In geography, we are taught about something called the aquifer. That when water goes and hits the water bed, it now, it now connects with a main underground you know, um, um, a stream of flow that ensures that water is always there. This can happen even for your finances. Don't allow business to make you throw away these forces and say, I am a businessman. I respect what you are saying, but I hope you understand what you are saying. Don't just say, I'm an astute investor. Wonderful. Don't just say, I'm an excellent, I mean, I have favor in my place of work and they are promoting me there. Your greatest confidence should not be the job, the business, or the investment. Your confidence should be these seven forces. Spirit his word was in my Forget Rudy. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The, the primary Rudy. goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire. Let your mind be Holy God's fire. For